Recycler, deploy on Eastern Geyser and build Razor. Acknowledge, Grizzly 1. Turret 2, take up position next to Turret 1 at Western Entrance. Yes, sir. Grizzly 1, radar arrays detect an unidentified craft approaching from the northern canyon. Razor complete. Razor 1, take my wing. Let's investigate. Yes, sir. Grizzly 1, we have a large force approaching from the east. Wait additional information. Grizzly 1, bogey's dropped off radar. Razor 1, take my 6. On my way. I'm gonna stump him. Greetings from the past, fellow time travelers. I'm Sporkinator. At long last, welcome to Let's Play Battlezone 98 Redux. Oh man, it has been a long time waiting, I'm sure, for most of you. Those of you who didn't play 1.5, what do you live in a cave? How did you not know 1.5 existed? I know the installer on Battlesin1.com for it got taken down because it was illegal, let's be honest, but back before Rebellion was remastering the game, pretty much no one cared, so we got away with it. I suppose that that's all there really is to it. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this, shall we? What do we have? Oh boy, let's start with combat exercises. I, I know I'm way too good at this game, it's so, so pointless for me to start here, but if I want to let's play this game... Let's do it properly. It's time for totally serious training. As we head towards Luna, Earth's moon. We've got a bit of a loading screen. Oh, there we go. Moon, Commander. I'm going to walk you through combat training. The general wants all NSDF command posts prepared to defend themselves. The future of our country depends on our success here in space. Uh oh, my mouse is not freaking working. What the f- Let's go for a test drive. Can I please have my mouse back? Welcome to the moon, Commander. I'm gonna walk you through combat training. The General wants all NSDF command posts prepared to defend themselves. The future of our country depends on our success here in space. Get into our experimental scout tag. Let's go for a test drive through the pylons ahead. Press O to review your current objectives. Well, that's weird. Why does my pilot keep walking in midair? They should probably fix that in the next patch. Because it looks weird, but oh well. Let's take a look at our sniper rifle. We've got that going on. Yeah. And the game has mods now, so I bet that's going to be neat. And we have a razor here, and screw the test course. I'm going this way. I wonder if this still works. I don't think they rescripted any of the missions. But normally you just drive through the pylons and then you kill these drones at the end, or if you're smart, you just kill the drones and be done with training. <laughs> oh man, I tell you what. Let's go kill the other one. I know where he is. He's in that other crater on my mini-map. The thing is, they put ammo, they put ammo power-ups there, so those show up as like yellow dots. Kinda gives away their positions. Pretty easy to find. Yes, kill the defenseless drone. That'll teach you to shoot completely harmless blank rounds at me. Take that, defenseless drone. Whee! I ejected, by the way. This is very important. If you would like to eject, you must press Control plus B. I don't believe there is any tutorial in the game for this, so... Take that as a fun fact. 
Good job, Commander. You have passed our basic combat and driving tests. I don't think I passed the driving test, though. <laughs> you are now ready to move on to basic command training. Oh, is that so, huh? Fine, then. Do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Just do it! Okay, Commander. Today, we'll practice using the command interface. We've got a T-7 Badger turret up ahead. The T-7 is an excellent defensive weapon when deployed, but it's very vulnerable when moving. Let's walk through the steps of commanding the turret. Open a comm channel with your turret by using the command interface in the top left of your HUD. When a menu is green, you have units in that category. Press the 2 key to view your defensive units. The 2 key... Where's 2? Just kidding, here it is. Notice the green line drawn into the radar. This will help you keep track of your units on the battlefield. At the bottom of each line in the radar, you will see a green colored circle with a number in it. Press the 1 key to select your turret. Okay, we press 1 to select the turret. Now, we're ready to give the turret an order. Press the 1 key to command the selected turret to follow you. Got Good job, leg. Commander. Head for the target range. Target range, huh? It's right here. It's a pylon. Okay, so what now, do? Let's order the turret to deploy. Open a comm channel with the turret. Press 2 to select your defensive units. Now, press 1 to select the turret. Okay. Glad you're here. Let's get the turret to deploy. Point your smart reticle at the ground and press the space bar to order the turret to move to that position and deploy. Turret, follow me. I'm leaving you. <laughs> Alright, let's just deploy him right next to the pylon. Here That'll the work. Toss. Let's watch the turret destroy a drone. Yes, indeed. Let's watch the turret destroy a poor defenseless tug. I'm gonna snipe it. Turret deployed. Okay, it was snipeable in the original game, I'm certain of it, but it looks like that's not happening this time. There! That ends the exercise, Commander. We'll debrief at Eagle's Nest 1. Good job, turret! Good work, team! Moving on to the next one. You're the real MVP. So! One thing that should be noted right now about Battles on 98 Redux is that they redid the shell, which means I can now record it with Fraps or DX Tori or even Open Broadcaster, but that had window capture, so it was less susceptible to this annoying crap. But basically, in the original game, you couldn't record the menus or the shell, as it were, with Fraps or DX Tori. It just wouldn't work. But now, it works. So doing a Let's Play of this game is now far easier than it used to be. In my original Let's Play, I had to edit in like the mission complete screen and other things, and I had to record it with like a tube catcher or something that was, it was like a completely different capture program, and it was a real hassle, but now everything is easy. Good work, Commander. You now know all of the basics of using the command interface. The system will expand from here, but you will find that it always works in the same way. Let's move on to commanding the recycler factory to build units. Recycler factory. I really feel feel like they should have just left out the word factory. That's very confusing because later on in the game you get another unit Well, yeah another Builder thing called a unit factory which is separate from the recycler and builds more advanced tanks and stuff But you anyway, know, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and start the next training mission In this mission we will introduce you to factories Factories reprocess a material we call biometal scrap into new vehicles, weapons, and supplies. We found scrap fields around the moon that probably came from meteor showers. Engineering has created scavenger units, which are like big mobile vacuum cleaners designed to gather scrap. The recycler is the key unit in building a base. I set it as your active objective. Open a comm channel with the recycler. Recycler, the recycler here. exists in a deployed and mobile state. It can only build units when it is deployed over a geyser power source. This recycler is currently deployed. Press the zero key to get it to pack up and ready to relocate to a geyser near a scrap field. Okay, and zero. Moving out. The recycler is now ready to move. Use your command interface to open a comm channel with the recycler and order it to follow you to a new geyser at checkpoint one. Keep in mind that the recycler is big and slow, it may not be able to keep up with you. Alright, so we can press 5 and then 1, or just point at the recycler and press space. Where's the power? And 1. Set to follow. 
The recycler's now following us, just like the turret in the last mission. Well, alright, without further ado, let's head over to checkpoint one. Here we are. Alright, let's open a comm channel with the recycler and order it to deploy on the geyser. Okay. Where's the Put power? Your smart reticle at the geyser and notice that the diamond on the ground changes to a white line. The command interface automatically recognizes that the recycler has a special interaction with the geyser. Press the space bar while pointing at the geyser to get the recycler to deploy on the power source. Alright, simple enough. Moving out. Getting power. Clear the geyser. And I like how he says clear the geyser when you're in the way. That was in the original game too. Just pointing that out though. I think it's so neat. Deploying. Now have the recycler build a scavenger. Open a comm channel with the recycler. Okay. Recycler here. One key to have the recycler build a scavenger. Press one for scavenger. Simple. Construction started. Ha. <sighs> Building the scrap display in your HUD. You'll need to keep tabs on your scrap supply in order to make smart building choices. Okay, so this mission appears to be playing out a little differently than the original game. In the original game, a fighter would come and attack our scavenger right away, but in the Redux, it appears that they're actually going to let our scavenger collect some scrap to teach us a valuable lesson about how scavengers gather resources to allow us to build more units. Scavengers will gather biometal on their own. However, you will need to protect your scavengers because they don't have any weapons. Protect that scavenger. I'm going to send a drone to attack it. Ah, here comes the drone. It's kind of funny how it's a CCA ship and we haven't encountered the CCA yet in the campaign. Good shooting, Commander. That enemy is scrap. But I guess that's just how it is, and they didn't bother to change it in the Redux. But I think we're done here. Scavenger here. I'm on it. I mean, he could get more scrap, but they're not going to let him, are they? They're going to end the mission right now, aren't they? Um, hello? Are we done here? Guys, boss, boss, are we done? Boss. Hey, boss, are we done Good yet? Good job, Commander. We're done here. Oh, okay. Needed another scrap drop to end the mission. That is definitely different than the original game. It did not do that. <laughs> oh, well. Mission completed. Excellent job, Commander. Make sure that you keep track of your current scrap supplies as well as how much you see in your immediate vicinity. This will help to make smart building decisions. If you ever get into a pinch, however, you can consider recycling units that you already have. Let's move on to using some of those scrap resources to build and command an offensive unit. All right, on we go to the next training mission. In this exercise, Commander, we'll show you how to build and command offensive units. You may be a hotshot pilot, but rest assured you'll find comfort in numbers if you find yourself attacking enemy installations. Engineering has tooled your recycler to build a wide variety of munitions. Use the command interface to order the recycler to build a scout. Select the recycler. Okay. Where's the Send power? the recycler to a geyser. Yeah, we know the drill at this point. Send the recycler to a geyser, then build a thing, and then do something with a thing. Isn't that right? Oh, it's so beautiful. Deploying. Select the recycler. Okay. Recycler here. One key to have your recycler build a scout. Now normally scout will be five instead of one, but for the purposes of this training mission, scout is indeed number one here. So don't let that confuse you later on. Construction Command started. Wingman, just like a turret, but the wingman does not have to deploy in order to be effective in combat. I put a nav beacon in the combat area. Nav beacons serve as spy cameras in the world, and you can also use them as staging points for gathering units. Hit the four key to access the list of active cameras. Then hit the one key to select the first camera. Notice the spy camera in the top right corner of your HUD. Open a comm channel with your wingman. Very well. Standing Order back. your wingman to the active nav beacon by hitting the alt key. Hitting the alt key. Yes, sir. Oh, good. That's working. Where are you going, boss? Wingman will automatically engage enemy targets when they come into close proximity. Ah, yes. Yeah. It's going well. Heading to the nav. Boom, following the 
Radar. Wingman blinks in the radar when it is under attack. This will inform you whenever one of your units is under attack. Good work. Use your scout to destroy the next drone. Oh, okay. Razor here. Whoa, follow the leader. Serious business, man. Serious business. Are we there yet? Stop before you get into range of the enemy unit. Oh. Hit the T key to target the drone. Right. Open a comm channel with your wingman. Oh, okay. Press the here. three key to see the available enemy targets, and then pick the target you would like your wingman to attack. You can fight with your wingman if you'd like. Okay, so we hit the three key, and we see drone two as a an available target. Up to ten targets can show in this menu at the top left. So if we press one, the scout will attack the drone. Let me at him. You get it, right? You get it. Because the way I'm going to kill this drone is something entirely oh, different. Later. I'm going to use the MDM mortar that comes standard on my grizzly tank. Boom. And if you hold control, you can fire multiple. Just like that. Fighting enemy. No, you come back here. Good job, now head back to the base. Back to base. Got it. Got a long way to go, Razor One. Follow me. Oh, follow the leader. Where are you going? Follow me. Oh, we don't actually have to go back. Oh, we got an achievement. We unlocked the playground or something. Commander, you have passed all of our combat training exercises. The NSDF Brass has given you a command at Luna Outpost 3. Long range radar is picking up a lot of rocket activity in the area, and command would like all resource gathering operations to have combat escorts. Congratulations on completing your training, and welcome to the zone. The battle zone. So now we go into combat exercises, and we can test out the playground, because why not? Satellite enabled. Now the mission description for this one says you can experiment and explore without danger. So that's basically what this is. You can experiment, build units, do whatever you want. And if, you, if you're using the map editor, you can probably place enemies and have a lot of fun with this. But yeah, there's not really much to see here, just launch pad and stuff. And that weird glowy effect, that is actually a new thing they added in graphics options. Screen glow. If y'all think it's annoying, I can turn it off. And I think for the purposes of this Let's Play, I'm actually going to turn on vehicle cockpits. And when cockpits are on high, everything's a bit shaky, and I don't like that. So, I normally play with no cockpits at all, but like I said, I kind of do want to show them off in the Let's Play. So I'm going to put cockpit display on low, which has the cockpit in view, but has it sitting statically. And I love that so much. I'm so glad they put that in. I may consider using this in multiplayer, despite the fact that it partially obscures my view and could make sniping a liability if I can't see my target due to my tank's cannon, but hey, whatever, it's it's really nice. It's something the original game should have had to begin with, but I digress. Anyway, let's go ahead and leave the playground and get into the actual campaign, shall we? And I'm wondering, should I turn up the detail? I think I have it on medium right now. And I know the terrain is supposed to look like really good on higher detail, but the question is, can I afford the performance decrease? I mean, I am playing in 1080p to be fair. As you can see, this is 1920 by 1080 at 32 bit Kalauer. But I don't know. I mean, vehicle shadows, medium, HUD size, auto. That's another thing they added is HUD scaling, so the HUD is big now. That's why I can finally stand playing in 1080p, because I can still see my radar and read the multiplayer chat and all that good stuff. We also have an option to display the HUD, but I think if you disable the HUD, you won't actually be able to issue commands. So that's mostly useful for cinematic recording and stuff. I'm gonna put the graphics detail on high and darn the consequences. Cockpit display, screen glow. I could turn this off if it's annoying, but I think I'm gonna leave it on because I, I really do like the screen glow effect. And I don't think it costs too much in terms of performance. I did a few tests and didn't really see much of a difference. I did get frame rate drops, but they seemed completely unrelated to that option. Anyway, NSDF Command is concerned about heavy rocket activity in this theater. As of yet, there are no reports of direct contact with hostile forces. All Moon personnel are currently on high alert. Mission objectives: get in a vehicle at Luna Outpost 3. Have the scavenger have the bleh, have the recycler build a scavenger. Escort the scavenger as it gathers biometal. Engineering report: we've provided you with a variety of different vehicles. Get additional info on the vehicles by pointing your smart reticle at them and pressing I. All right, folks, here we go. It's that it's going to start out with that memorable cin cinematic that everyone feels nostalgia for. At least I'm fairly certain of it. The loading screens are a bit long in this game, but it's not too bad considering they 
vastly upgraded the graphics. Sometimes it bugs me that Armstrong and Shepard get all the credit. But we all wanted to win the Cold War. And we were ready to commit our lives to getting the biometal. The military boys used all the material that had fallen to Earth. And they still needed more. They went looking for a few cowboys to do the job. And in the end, they orchestrated the world's biggest cover-up. They snuck a whole army into space and not a soul knew a thing. <laughs> but now it's time. People should know why it was so important that we won the space race. People should know what happened to all those who went missing. The dead should get their honors. They should have their place in history. Because history has a way of repeating itself. Commander, enabled. we've discovered a deposit of biometal along with some strange radar signatures. Build a scavenger and escort it to the biometal deposit. Oh boy, this high detail is really costing me some frames. I'm only getting 50, 45 to 50 frames per second. I may have to go back and adjust that because I'm kind of picky about performance. Tell you what, low, medium, high, that's all we have. There's no ultra. Well, I'm okay with that because I clearly can't handle high. Cockpit display. I think everything else is fine. I mean, I could put vehicle shadows on low. Does anyone really care? I don't know if that'll help me much. Whoa, what the heck? Uh-oh. That kind of uh, really lagged the, the game a bit when it went to ultra for a bit there. I'll put vehicle shadows on low. They probably won't look too bad, right? Yeah, see, I'm back at a perfect 60 frames per second now. And if the vehicle shadows end up looking terrible, I'll turn them up a little bit. Let's just see how they look in the Grizzly. Because that's kind of the point of this remaster, was the upgraded graphics. Do I even have shadows? I don't see I don't see any shadows. Which way is the sun? The sun's that way? Maybe the shadows are completely disabled when I do that. I don't know. Because I could have swore the comm tower was probably supposed to have a dynamic shadow. And same with everything, right? I don't even see my own shadow in third person view. Yeah, I'm sorry that I'm not making any game progress here, but I am kind of still experimenting with this, because this is all new. Uh, let's see, vehicle shadows... Uh, medium? Does medium do anything? Hmm. Whatever. Recycler let's here. build that scavenger and get this crap started. Construction started. For real now, because that's not the training missions. This is actually, like, the real campaign missions. Building complete. This is what you all probably have been looking forward to. Scavenger here. Following. So you want to escort the scavenger as it collects biometal, right? Now instead of just letting the scav wander aimlessly, what you want to do is have it follow you. Then it's behind you at all times, and you can keep tabs on it much easier that way. So yeah, we're going to head towards the scrap field, which is Nav Beacon 2. And it's funny, this scrap here is actually a trigger for the next event. So we we should go here if we want to win the mission. Actually, one, we've got a situation. Unidentified vehicles are approaching your position from the southwest. Following. Oh no, it's a fighter! I've never seen that before. It's coming towards us. What should I do? Well, only thing I can do is kill it. Scavenger here. Following. Stay behind me, scavenger. I'll protect you. Recycling. Probably gonna need ammo later, so let's build one of those back started. at base. I could pick up that scrap there, but Building complete. I don't know. Scavenger here. I'm on it. Yeah. Getting scrap. Follow me. Following. They can get places faster if you have them follow you. So this Scavenger is what you want to do here. most of the time. I'm on it. Getting scrap. All right, he's at full scrap now. Let's Following. have him follow us back to base so we can drop off that scrap at the recycler. Unfortunately, we've got another scavenger out there that's being threatened by Soviet wingmen. Just listen to that soundtrack. It's as epic as it has ever been. It's the same as the original game. Oh, it's so nostalgic and wonderful. I know, I know, I should shut up about it, but it's just so good. I don't think any other game has had a soundtrack that compares to Battlezone. But I could be biased, I don't know. Put your opinion in the comments, I guess. Oh, hey, man. I don't appreciate you screwing around with my whoa. There goes the thumper. It didn't have much effect because I was close. I think it works better further away. But that's another one down. And another scavenger protected. Did he eject? If he did eject, I'm gonna snipe him. Uh, maybe he didn't survive the explosion. By the way, this scrap looks absolutely hideous. 
It's freaking orange and red and yellow or something. Who thought that was a good idea? Sorry, Rebellion, you goofed on that one. That's just stupid. But I guess I can kind of stop here and get like a close-up of the terrain. I mean, I know it's on medium detail instead of high. I could go back to high for a moment, I guess. Let's do that. Why not? See, terrain, terrain detail. I promise I won't be doing this through the entire Let's Play, just for the first episode here. Graphics detail high. Apply. Apply the high. Yeah, it does have some more detail to it. One. We've confirmed that the hostile vehicles are of Soviet origin. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we end the mission, I want to set that back because I can't handle the performance decrease. It's just too choppy for me. I mean, that's already going to be happening enough during battles and stuff, most likely. I mean, low is kind of low, but medium. Medium is a happy medium. They've maneuvered around Outpost 3 and are headed towards Eagle's Nest 1. Await further orders from NSDF Command. Oh, achievement unlocked, Red Arrival. We've beaten the first mission. As you can see, this game most likely has achievements for every single mission and completing all the training missions. So, the mission is completed. We have confirmed that the invading units are Soviet. As the CIA believed, the Soviets have a counterpart to our NSDF called the Cosmic Colonist Army. Could have swore it was the Cosmo Communist Army because that's what it is in the game's audio for the CCA campaign. But anyway... Their goals are in direct conflict with ours. The CCA forces avoided Outpost 3 and moved on to attack our main base at Eagle's Nest 1. Their attack caught our base defenses off guard and casualties are high. NSDF Command is now recalling all combat units to help defend Eagle's Nest 1. The Soviets have already destroyed our primary recycler and all building functions are currently inoperable. A training recycler, the NSDF Montana, is en route to help resurrect the base defenses. The Brass wants you back at Eagle's Nest 1, where you will take command of all NSDF combat forces. And without further ado, I thank you for watching. And next time on Battlezone 98 Redux, we will take on the next mission. So, may we meet again in the future. Gosh, I'm so glad this thing is finally released. It has been a dream of ours for a long time. Well, when I say ours, I mean me and, and I think several other people in the community, but mostly Spectre. Spectre and I have always talked about what it would be like to have Battlezone on Steam. And now, at long last, everything we have dreamed has become reality. Beyond getting an unofficial 1.5 patch that made the game playable on modern systems, we now have an official Steam release. And by the way, I was in the beta. That was a ton of fun. You'll probably find out that my name is in the ending credits when you beat the game. So good luck, and may the force be with you. I did finally see Star Wars Episode Seven. It was good, I'd, I'd say it was pretty good. I, I mean, some things, like, I didn't really like the main villain. And beyond spoiling anything, I'm just gonna end the video here. Goodbye for now, I don't know why I'm still rambling about this. But yeah, see you next time.